Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with Cape Falcon Kayak and I've been spending the week in the shop here building a brand new demo boat for Cape Falcon Kayak and also reshooting a bunch of the videos in my online kayak building series. And this boat contains a lot of experimental ideas and also the modifications for my surf version of the F1. So I thought it might just be kind of fun to walk you through this entire boat and show you all the things that I'm working on right now and what I changed for this particular boat. Maybe it'll give you some ideas for designing your own kayaks or if you're building your own F1 kayak, you might get a heads up on certain things that you could try that aren't in the plans yet, but we might be heading towards depending on how they turn out. Okay, so just going through this boat, uh, different things that I am doing that I may or may not incorporate into the new Cape Falcon F1 designs. Uh, starting at the bow here, you can see there's a little hole right here with a little cord going through it. And what that is, is a cord that you can use to pull a float bag or a gear bag to the front of the boat. And this is something I'm not sure if I'm going to incorporate because I feel like this cord creates an entanglement hazard. And I have never personally had a problem with float bags staying in one of these boats. So it might just be superfluous. Um, if you decide to do this to your own boat, this is a 3 8 inch hole, I've eased the edges of it, and I'm running this piece of parachute cord, one side of it goes outside of the ribs here, and that is just to reduce the entanglement hazard. So if you're going to do this, you would have to do this before you put the skin on. Now, the other thing I've done is I changed the deck ridge here. This deck ridge is specced at an inch and a half by 11 16 and I brought this down to an inch and 3 8 by a full 3 quarter. And the reason that I did that is because I'm trying to get the same amount of strength but a little bit wider mounting surface for the mass step of a sail. I've got a little sail that I'm working on for my double paddle canoes right now and I really want it to be interchangeable between my kayaks and my canoes. So I just thought by making this a little bit wider, a little bit shorter, it would give a little bit better mounting surface. And honestly, to do it again, I would make this 7 eighths of an inch wide by an inch and a quarter tall. I think that would be just about perfect in that area. And that also has the added advantage of changing the angle of incidence between the top of this ridge and the edge of the gunnel here. So they meet perfectly flush. So you can screw down little uh, attachment points for your stays for your little mast. So anyways, that is another thing. Um, you can see that this does not have a groove down the middle. I normally put a groove right down the middle of the F1 deck ridge. And the reason I do that is because it makes a fantastic cutting guide for your hot knife while you're skinning your boat. But in this case, because I want to mount stuff on top of this, I don't want the stitch to be right on top. So when I go to cut my skin on this one, I'm going to cut it off to the side here and then leave a little bit of a flat spot so I can mount both the little uh, eye eyelet up here and also the mast step and maybe even a cam cleat back here. All right, so heading down along the frame here, you can see this secondary chine here. This is a little piece of wood that I add to the bottom of the gunnel because it gets a little bit more buoyancy out here where you need it. It gives the boat a little more primary stability, which is one of the hardest things to get in skin boats. And this in the plans is specced at half inch by half inch. And I've made this half inch by five eighths of an inch with the wider dimension sticking out. And the idea behind that is that I'm gonna be able to get even more buoyancy in this area and maybe give me a little stronger register of primary stability. Now that could be completely my imagination. It's only an eighth of an inch on either side. So I actually have to try it to see if it works. And there is a trade-off there because the more you change the angle of the skin going up to the gunnel right here, the more air space you leave as you're punching through for your deck lines, which means they're going to be more likely to leak. So, you know, there's trade-offs to everything there. I'm going to actually have to do it and uh, see how I feel about this. And of course, it just adds more weight. Um, the shaping in here, uh, I got really aggressive with the bow shaping in this boat because, you know, those of you who know me know that I'm or at least was kind of a surf maniac. And the most important thing about any F1 kayak is just making sure that those first three ribs are really, really V-shaped because not only does that allow the water to transit over this chine right here at a very shallow angle, which is what you need if you're designing a hard chine boat, because if this angle gets more than just a couple of degrees as far as what the water sees, it creates a big draggy vortex and the whole boat just paddles really sluggishly. But in addition to that, the more that this chine is sticking out, the more likely it is to bite into an ocean wave. And that is what causes that broaching behavior that's so frustrating when you got a good surf going on and then all of a sudden you're headed up over the shoulder. So by really taking the first four ribs of this kayak and really forcing an intense V to the point where I was like cracking the mortises while I did it, that's going to really accentuate that performance as well. 
Um, heading back here, something that I wish I would have did, but I am too lazy to do it, is I already had some deck beams sitting around, so I just went ahead and went with them. But this deck beam right here, which is 13 16 by inch and 5 8 I would much rather see that in this case be about two inches wide, because if you're talking about adding a sail to something, you need somewhere to add the cleats. So the cleat that comes back for the halyard, the cleat that comes back for the sheet, if you have one of those, needs a good mounting surface. And this inch and five eighths here will work, but it's not quite enough. So I'd much rather see that be about two inches wide. Um, heading back to the cockpit, this is the combing that I made for this particular boat. And this is something I'm not sure if I'm gonna do. It's a double-lipped combing. And the reason that I did this is because I want a little more purchase in case I want to use a sea sock. Now, I personally absolutely hate sea socks. I don't feel like they make the boat any safer. I hate how they feel on my body, but I can see a very strong argument for them in one condition. And that is if you are touring alone with a loaded boat, because if you sink a loaded boat, is a loaded skin boat, and you are by yourself, there is no way that you can rescue it. So in that case, a sea sock might make sense, but it has to be a sea sock that works. And it was only recently that I saw the Reed sea socks and it was the first sea sock I've ever seen that I thought might actually be something I could trust my life to. So this is just something I'm experimenting with right now. Um, I'm not gonna say that Cape Falcon kayaks are gonna become double lip combings. The single lip combing that I use on this will hold a Snapdragon spray skirt, even if a 10 foot dumping wave hits you in the face. You're more likely to actually damage your physical body than you are to blow in a spray skirt on my standard lipped combing. So this is just something that might apply to a sea sock. Kind of, I'm kind of hoping it doesn't because I don't wanna have to build these. They're kind of hard to make, but whatever. Um, Another thing I did with this boat, which is just part of the surf modifications that are described on the website, and that is that I moved this deck beam back a half of an inch. And I know it probably doesn't seem like a half of an inch makes much of a difference at all, but when you're talking about something with planing performance, you know, little things can make a really big difference as far as the balance while it's surfing on a wind wave or surfing on an ocean wave. And I just know from experience that if I move this back a half of an inch, it's gonna bite the tail in a little bit deeper. I'm gonna get a little better surf performance, but the consequence of that is that it's gonna pop the bow out of the water a little bit, and it's gonna make the bow wag back and forth slightly. And that lose, that is a reflection of the kayak losing energy. And so, you know, by doing this, I am increasing the surf performance and slightly decreasing just the general straight ahead paddling performance. So just a series of trade-offs, probably not something that anyone that didn't really know these boats would notice in the first place, but it was my own choice for how I wanted to balance this kayak. All right, heading back to the stern here. We have the stern shaping on this, which I changed quite a bit over the original plans. And what I did here was I took these last four ribs and I made I cut the ends off them after I was finished uh, ribbing this boat and that makes the boat a half inch shallower in this area so I could add a double keel in the back here. So you can see I've got the regular keel and I've also got a half inch tall keel that's on top of it right here. And what that does is that gives me a little bit more breathing room here so I can bridge the skin to a higher angle between the keel up to where the chine is right here. And what that does is it allows me to pull the chines up extremely hard in the back, like as hard as I possibly can. And the reason you want to do that is because in any kind of a boat that is designed for surf performance, you know, you really want to get the volume of the boat out of the water as quickly as you can while leaving the tail nice and deep. And this is one of the reasons that the Mariner Coaster shape, which is the boat that this was originally copied off of way back in 2006, is never gonna be made in, in plywood because there is a twisting angle to the plane of that surface in the back that's really aggressive and there's just no way to achieve it with plywood. So it's kind of cool that it only works in skin on frame or in fiberglass. And so by getting rid of this, I am reducing my cargo space back here a little bit, you know, which kind of sucks if I'm trying to load this thing up for a long trip and kind of on that point, um, by making the bow six inches shorter for the surf modification on this particular boat, I'm also reducing the cargo space in the front and reducing the space on deck for a spare paddle. So there's definitely trade-offs there, you know, but they're trade-offs that I'm comfortable with. This is primarily going to be a day boat and a demo boat and kind of, you know, a play boat, but it still has enough room if I want to, to take it out for a week-long trip. 
So that is the new Cape Falcon Kayak Demo F1. And I have a terrible habit of selling my demo boats a couple weeks after I finish them. But this one, I'm gonna do my very best to hold on to it and not let it go. So it will be here. So if you're coming through the Portland area, you can take this thing out, see how it paddles. As long as you're kind of roughly in the size range, it should give you a good feel for the boat. And I always like it when people can try out the boats before they make a purchase, either a video or a custom boat from me, because kayak designers can talk all day long about how great our boats are. But the only thing that really matters is how it feels on your body. Now, there's a lot of experimental modifications in here, but none of them are very extreme. So if you're building an F1 at home, feel free to incorporate any of these ideas into the boat. The worst thing that happens is they don't end up adding to the boat, but you know, they might add to the boat, who knows.